guys, I want to share some new information. This is a study that just got published today in The Lancet, and it's a study that's offering hope for long-term, very sick um, anorectics. It's encouraging because we know that recovery statistics are very low and that the longer you're sick, the harder it is to recover. And we know that while we have treatment modalities that are supportive, they are not curative and in many cases they aren't effective. So there is a lot of desperation in this field because illnesses are so insidious and difficult to treat. The idea is that all of our body runs on electric current. What it is is it goes between um, neurons, like nerve cells, that um, send out impulses called action potentials and to transmit a signal like one to the other and then the other to the next one, etc. Brain activity in patients with depression and mental illness can be lowered in particular mood centers. So treatments like this can reactivate or re-stimulate pathways that can encourage better mood um, or mental healing. And it sounds really horrific, but, you know, brain surgeries come a long way in and of itself. We understand cerebral phys physiology better than ever. Um, this isn't just like, you know, a primitive thing. This is a very sophisticated procedure. Um, so don't think it's like crazy 30s stuff or anything. I won't give you guys bad, scary images, but okay. After nine months of follow-up, three of the six women had a documented weight gain that topped anything they'd experienced in all of their previous years of treatment. That's huge, you guys! Obviously, the pilot study with such few patients, but the fact that it showed such positive results mean we'll be seeing a much more large-scale study, I'm sure, and this treatment may become available to those who are basically terminal in their EDs. So this is absolutely phenomenal and encouraging information. And I hope that if you are a long-term anorectic who believes there is no hope for you, that you've been in and out of hospitals and treatment, and you've tried all the drugs, and you've tried all the therapy, maybe you've even tried ECT, that there's no hope, know that research is going on and a method has been found that has helped some people. I'm going to share um, the summary from the Lancet article, and I'll try to translate the medical use for you guys. Okay. Um, anorexia nervosa is characterized by a chronic course that is refractory to treatment in many patients and has one of the highest mortality rates of any psychiatric disorder. Deep brain stimulation, or DBS, has been applied to circuit-based neuropsychiatric diseases such as Parkinson's disease and major depression with promising results. We aim to assess the safety of DBS to modulate the activity of limbic circuits and to examine how this might affect the clinical features of anorexia nervosa. We did a phase one prospective trial of subcolossal cingulate DBS in six patients with chronic, severe, and treatment refractory anorexia nervosa. Eligible patients were aged 20 to 60 years had been diagnosed with restricting or binge purging anorexia nervosa and showed evidence of chronicity or treatment resistance. Patients underwent medical optimization preoperatively and had baseline body mass index, psychometric, and neuroimaging investigations followed by implantation of electrodes and pulse generators for the continuous delivery of electrical stimulation. It's basically a brain pacemaker is what they're talking about. Um, patients were followed for up to nine months after DBS activation, and the primary outcome of adverse events associated with surgery or stimulation 
was monitored at every follow-up visit. Repeat psychometric assessments, BMI measurements, and neuroimaging investigations were also done at various intervals. Um, and then it gives you clinical trials information. CBS was associated with several adverse events, only one of which, seizure during programming roughly two weeks after surgery, was serious. Other related adverse events were panic attack during surgery, nausea, air, and blister pain. After nine months, three of the six patients had achieved and maintained a, a BMI greater than their historical baselines. DBS was associated with improvements in mood, anxiety, affective regulation, and anorexia nervosa related obsessions and compulsions in four patients, and with improvements in quality of life in three patients after six months of stimulation. These clinical benefits were accompanied by changes in cerebral glucose metabolism seen in a comparison of composite PET scans at baseline in six months and were consistent with a reversal of the abnormalities seen in the anterior cingulate, insula, and parietal lobe in the disorder. Interpretation. Subclosal cingulate DBS seems to be generally safe in this sample of patients with chronic and treatment refractory anorexia nervosa. This is inspiring. Okay, see if I can translate this for you guys. Now. What they were talking about with um, changes in cerebral glucose metabolism. When your brain is active, it consumes glucose, which is blood sugar. So the more activity in the brain, the more glucose consumption you will see. Obviously, in anorectic Blood sugar in general tends to be very low, a lot of brain slows, there's brain atrophy, and there is a profound decrease in activity in several areas of the brain. We've known this for a while, that there are um, actual anatomical changes in the brain from the ED, especially in treatment refractory or treatment resistant, basically um, people who don't respond to any current um, traditional recovery modalities. So a PET scan, it's a type of imaging scan that they can look at and see the baseline scan and the scan at six months showed that there was more activity in the areas that are generally suppressed by the ED. So that's good. Deep brain stimulation means placing um, electrodes into this area of the brain and they used a pacemaker to generate impulses and trigger the area. The brain can learn new pathways and heal and become more active and you know we can relearn and retrain and regrow which is why methodologies like this um, are even considered so phase one pilot trial means this is the first phase of a medical experiment that typically will involve very small patient population sizes and those for whom all other treatment methods have failed, who are also generally um, in grave risk. What else did I need to explain? Oh, psychometric assessment. Basically, that's just like um, a psych eval. Like, you answer questions, they measure your competency, um, your disordered thoughts, feelings versus healthy, etc. It's a way of measuring um, your, the mental aspects of your condition. This is information from an article on Forbes that really um, explains this well and um, probably will be more helpful to like non-research people. <laughs> Women with severe life-threatening anorexia experience dramatic improvement for the first time in their lives after a breakthrough deep brain stimulation experiment published today in The Lancet. In a first-of-its-kind study conducted at the University of Toronto and the Crumble Neuroscience Center, researchers implanted electrodes in a specific part of the brain already known to be involved in depression and other mood disorders. Then, over a six-month period, they stimulated the electrodes targeting positive effects on mood, anxiety, and the impulse to restrict binge and purge. 
In other words, they attempted to rewire their brains. Brain activity in patients with depression and mental illness can be lowered in particular mood centers. So treatments like this can reactivate or re-stimulate pathways that can encourage better mood, um, more mental healing. After nine months of follow-up, three of six women had a documented weight gain that topped anything they'd experienced in all their previous years of treatment. Four of the women experienced significant improvement in control over moods and emotional responses, eating disorder urges, and obsessive compulsive thoughts and behaviors. That's huge, you guys. So why did this tiny phase one pilot study successful for only four of six women matter so much? After all, it still requires extensive replication to result in a new treatment protocol. And it involved an invasive surgical treatment that would likely be used only in extreme cases. Here's what it tells us and why it has scientists talking. That physical circuitry in the brain can be altered to cause mental illness and to treat it. In this study, the research team targeted electrical stimulation to specific brain functions governing mood, anxiety, reward, and body perception that go away in people with anorexia and other eating disorders. And it worked. If you think about it, just grasping this concept explains why, for many women with eating disorders, psychotherapy doesn't go very far. If there are physiologic changes in brain circuitry controlling eating disorder thinking, then just trying not to have those thoughts is going to be pretty rough. This has sort of been my focus on research and my um, awareness raising advocacy efforts. There is not a cure for EDs. We have to learn to live with them, not for them to minimize pathology, to maximize wellness the best we can. Rarely does the voice leave us. Rarely is the pathology totally mitigated. This is important. This is more scientific evidence also, by the way, in support of the fact that this is not a fad or trend or diet or, you know, just some vain, shallow thing. This is actually a genuine illness. That's another thing that a lot of people think, you know, EDs are choices. They're not choices. They're genuine illnesses. I have videos on that if you're interested. I think what I'm going to do, actually, being tangential, is create, like, a research-oriented videos playlist. And I'll put this and some of my others on there, like the Piranha Research ones and stuff. For you guys. Uh, let's see. That severe... Life-threatening, treatment-resistant anorexia doesn't have to be hopeless. These women who would almost certainly have continued to decline and who would eventually have died from anorexia and for whom no previous treatment had worked. And sadly, this is not as rare as you might think. Anorexia is the top cause of death among all mental illnesses. Yes, it tops suicide along with those with major depression. Defying stereotypes, these aren't young women. The mean age in the study was 38, and these women had been battling anorexia for a mean of 18 years. Together, they'd been hospitalized more than 50 times. That deep brain stimulation could offer potential treatments for other neurological disorders for which we currently have no cure. By pinpointing and correcting the precise circuits in the brain associated with the symptoms of these conditions, we are finding additional options to treat these illnesses, said neurosurgeon Andres Lozano, who led the research team. Really interesting, you guys. Um, the first impulse generator type device is a pacemaker that people think of for the heart, like I have a cardiac pacemaker. They now have gastric pacemakers, they have bladder pacemakers, they have um, obviously brain stimulation. It's amazing, like the different benefits of impulses that can be generated artificially and sent to different parts of the body. Really fascinating field. As for depression, 
An in-depth story earlier this year in Sienna's house, the battery-powered brain, documented the successful use of DBS to treat major depressive disorder in people for whom conventional treatments have failed. The original research conducted by Helen Mayberg and additional research has led to a patent agreement between the University of Cincinnati, where Mayberg works, and St. Jude Medical. According to a recent business report, St. Jude Medical is poised to go up against Medtronic in the DBS field. St. Jude Medical Inc.'s therapeutic DBS device for Parkinson's called the Libra and Libra XP is currently available internationally and is awaiting FDA approval in the U.S. OCD. Medtronic is currently offering reclaimed DBS therapy for OCD based on research conducted at Butler University. Very cool. I think I explained the major stuff. If there's anything in this that you don't understand, you have any questions, ask me and I'll be happy to explain it better. I'm so happy. I'm just, I'm so happy to see this information and props to Medtronic. I'm alive because of them. So, yay for that. Yay.